Hello, this is the final part of the walkthrough of the first AAT sample assessment for the personal tax unit. So this one will be covering tasks 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. 9, 10 and 11 are on capital gains tax and 12 and 13 are on inheritance tax. So let me share my screen. Here we go. OK, so task nine, 10 marks. Incidentally, tasks nine, 10 and 11 all on capital gains tax. So Sue sold five assets to unconnected persons during 2021. Proceeds and costs are shown. So we have to show whether the selling of each asset results in a taxable gain, an allowable loss or is exempt in this first drop down and then indicate the amount of the gain or loss in the final column. If it's exempt, we just put zero in the final column. Do not use brackets or minus signs and enter your answer in whole pounds only. Just a reminder, it's very important to follow the instructions to the letter. It's marked by a computer, so if you don't, it's just gonna be wrong. So a desk. So a desk is a chattel tangible movable property. In this case, both the proceeds and the cost exceed 6,000. So we're just going to do a normal capital gains tax calculation. So 8980 proceeds subtract 7140 gives us a gain of 1840. Chair. Right, so this time again, it's a chattel, but look, it straddles the 6,000. So when I was going through this, I suddenly thought I could call it a chattel straddle, like it almost rhymes, but it's not that funny. Um, so what do we do here? So if the proceeds are greater than the cost, then that means that we're looking at our five thirds rule. So what we do, first of all, is we work it out as normal. So 6240, subtract 5600 equals 640 but then we have to do our capped at calculation so our capped at calculation is the gross proceeds 6240 subtract 6000 which of course gives us 240 and then we have to find five thirds of that. So 240, I'm going to go divide by three times by five is 400. So 400 is less than 640. So that will be the amount of the gain. But nonetheless, it is still a gain. Right, the mirror. Again, it's a chattel straddle, um, but this time in the other direction. So what it means when it's this way round is that you have to deem the proceeds to be 6,000. So 6,000 subtract 6330 gives us 330 loss. It says do not use brackets or minus signs. We know it's a loss because we are going to say so in this column. We have a ring. Both figures are under 6,000, so that means it is an exempt chattel, and therefore there will be no gain or loss. And then a racehorse, we know that any animal is a wasting chattel, expected to live less than 50 years, and again, we know that any animal, a wasting chattel, is exempt. Part B, complete the following sentences. Rowley and his brother-in-law will or will not, or sorry, would or would not be treated as connected persons. Well, my rule here is I just think, right, it's every, any relation apart from an aunt, an uncle or a cousin. So a brother-in-law would be a connected person. A 70-year-old vintage car would not be chargeable because any motor car is an exempt asset. 
um, part C. Elizabeth bought a painting for 32,400 in June 2009 and was charged 10% commission by the auctioneer. She sold the painting in January 2021 for 58,500 and she spent 1,200 on advertising it for sale. Throughout the period of ownership, Elizabeth spent 2,200 on insuring the painting. Now, this is quite an interesting question just to kind of see what they want us to include as proceeds compared with cost. So the proceeds is literally what she sold it for. So 58,500. The cost is the original cost of the painting, 32,400. 10% commission, so that's 3,240 that has to be added on. And then also the 1,200 to advertise the sale because that is part of the cost that has to be deducted. So to recap, it's 32,400 plus 3,240 plus 1,200. So that gives us a figure of 36840. Notably, we did not include the 2200. Insuring the painting is not a cost of the asset, it is a revenue cost, so we do not include it. Again, it says do not use brackets or minus signs. So we put the cost in as a number and then we subtract it to get the gain. OK, so how many marks was that one altogether? Ten, wasn't it? Yeah, ten marks for task nine. So task ten, this I believe is the shares human mart question when it finally loads. Been having trouble with the um, Wi Fi today. It's taking a little while, so hopefully, we'll get there in a minute. No, it hasn't done it yet. Let's try again. Task 10. There we go, at last. So, it is indeed the, the shares task. So, Keith Borton sold numerous shares in Healy PLC as follows. Um, so you can just about see the question while it's still loading. So we've got a purchase of shares, we've got a rights issue, we've got a sale of shares at a previous tax year. Doesn't come up that much in the book examples, so it's good to do one here. There's a bonus issue, a further purchase, and then the sale that we are interested in. So remember, this is the one where you are given a grid, a four column grid. And my recommendation is that you start with dates and details, workings, number of shares, and cost in pounds. Always start with those headings. You almost don't need to read the question. Um, so I would suggest starting with the share pool. But before you do that, just have a little think about the matching rules. So remember the matching rules is, we're looking at this sale here. So is anything bought on the same day? No, it's not. Is anything bought in the, the forthcoming 30 days? No, it's not. So in this particular example, the only match is going to be from the pool, which looks as if it's fairly involved. Right, so we're going to go through and complete our share pool first of all. So 1st of January 13, purchase 800 shares at £6.10 per share. OK, so 1st of January 2013, purchase. And we could say 800 shares at £6.10. So 800 shares multiplied by £6.10 is 4880. The next transaction, 1st of July 15, a one for five rights issue for £3.80 per share. 
So, July 2015. One for, whoops, one for five rights issue. So in terms of workings, we're going to do 800 at the moment shares divide by five. 800 divided by five is 160. And they are going to be sold for £3.80 a piece. So we've got 160 shares multiplied by £3.80 is 600, oh, 608. Remember the advice to always do a running total. So we have 960 at a total cost of 5488. Next transaction, August 15, Keith sold 400 shares for eight pounds per share. Now, do not fall into the trap of using the eight pounds per share as the cost. That is what he sold them for. You have to use your average cost to apply to the 400 shares. All right, so I'll show you what I mean. So on the 12th of August, 2015, we have a sale. So my calculation is going to be, first of all, work out the average. So 5488 divide by 960, that's going to give me my average cost per share. And he is selling 400 shares. All right, so 400 shares are coming out. So we can put that in brackets. We then need our calculator, so 5488 divide by 960 multiplied by 400 is 2287 coming out of the share pool. All right, the most common mistake is that people do 400 times whatever you're told is the selling price. Incorrect. You only need the selling price when you're working out the capital gain and you are not required to work out the capital gain for the 2015 transaction. Right, so we then do another running total. So we now have 560 shares remaining, 960 subtract 400, at a total cost of 3,201. 5488 subtract 2287. So our next transaction, 25th of March 16, a one for 10 bonus issue when the shares had a market value of £6.90. Do not care. The cost of shares from a bonus issue is zero. It's a bonus issue. So do not fall into the trap. So 25th of March 2016. Um, what was it? A one for 10 bonus issue. So we take our 560 shares and we divide it by 10, one for 10. So that means another 56 shares have been issued, but at zero cost. Running total, 560 plus 56 is 616 and still a cost of 3201. Next transaction, 14th of April 17, Keith bought 500 shares at a cost of £8.20 per share. Right, so this is the 14th of April 2017 purchase. 500 shares at £8.20. So we've got an extra 500 being added in there. 500 times £8.20 is £4,100. Another running total gives us 1116 shares at a total of £7,301. Right, so now we come to our 
relevant sale. This is the one that we're going to work out the gain for. So the 19th of October 2020, Keith is selling 250 shares. Right, so let's just deal with the pool while we're here. Why not? So 19th of October 2020, sale. So he is selling 250 shares, but remember our calculation. So I'm going to do 7301 divide by 1116. That gives me my average cost per share. And then I'm going to multiply that by the 250 shares that are being sold. Now I know it's 250 shares have got to come out of the pool because remember at the beginning I checked that there was nothing else on the same day and there was nothing in the next 30 days. So let's work out that calculation. So 7301 divide by 1116 times 250. That gives me 1635.5. So round that up, one six and then narrative here will just be balance carried forward so 1116 subtract 250 leaves us with 866 shares at a total cost of 5665 so we can then work out our gain which we do by comparing the proceeds, so remember this is for 250 shares, how much did we sell them for? 250 shares for £10.10 10 per share, so 250 times £10.10 10 is 2,505 and the cost which is all from the share pool in this example, all 250 shares will come from there. And remember, it's this figure here that we've worked out, the 1636. All together, the gain that we are asked for is 889. Clearly show the balance of shares and their value to carry forward. We've done that. Calculate the gain Keith made on the sale of shares. All workings must be shown. Enter your answer in whole pounds only. All right, so I rounded to the nearest pound throughout. OK, so that's what that question should look like. They might have done it around the other way. Doesn't matter. OK, so 10 marks for task nine. 10 marks for task 10, so that's 20 marks on capital gains. Hopefully this one is seven, as I've been going around saying it's seven marks all along. So this is now task 11, also on capital gains. I do apologise, this is rather slow this evening. Doesn't like it. Try again. Not having much luck, am I? Um, one more try. Oh. I'm just going to try one other method, which is just to press the next button instead, see if that works.
It's not going to play. All right, I'm going to cut this video and do 11, 12 and 13 on a separate video.